I'm really looking forward to this meeting with the, uh, the superintendent and the uh, Inter Institutional Review Board member. I'm really excited about this too. I, I can't wait to get going on this project. Uh, what do you think about this principal? Do you think he's open to our, to our idea? You know, the principal is, is really excited about it. In fact, it, it was his idea. I met him a few months ago. Um, and he, he told me that he has these students in his school that have really interesting stories, powerful stories that, um, that he wants to share with, with his teachers and, and with, you know, with the world. Switch. Did you bring the IRB forms with you? I do. I have them along with a lot of unanswered questions for these researchers. Mm. We have another meeting right after this as well, so we can't take a lot of time. Um, uh, I did look over the, the information that they sent. I, I have some questions. I just have some questions about it. Switch. So, so the principal's into this, huh? You, you've talked to him a while about this. I did. It's been about eight months in, you know, in the making. Uh, I'm new to the area, uh, and as I just took this position, I'm right out of school, and it's really exciting to me. Um, not have to worry about my dissertation committee, not have to worry about um, the pressure of others sort of making me go one direction or the other. I really feel like I have the freedom to, to, uh, to write my own, my own path. Tell me about it, man. I, I just, just finished my dissertation and it was exhausting. I felt like as I wrote every single page, every word perhaps, there was somebody else's voice inside my head saying, have you considered this? What about that? Maybe you should try this. Scrap that. I have no idea what you're trying to say here. Yeah, I, you know, I remember the, the day I thought I was done, I went in and was talking to my committee and, uh, you know, one of, one of the ladies on my committee had stacks of, of revisions to make. So right now I'm just really excited to start afresh, have a new idea that, that the principal is really excited about uh, and, and get to interact with kids. I, I really can't wait. This Switch. is ours. You know, the principal came to me and asked me to come to this meeting today and, and um, I decided he's... He, he's, a, he's a good guy. I decided to go ahead and let's 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 do this and see what they want to do. But this is like group number five from the university this year that we've had come in here to do research. I was just going to say, what number is this? We've had so many come and approach us about doing research in the schools, and you know me. My major concern is protecting the children, uh, confidentiality, safety, uh, not to mention all the potential litigation. Well, I want to know what what we're going to be getting out of this as well. You know, that's an issue. It's yeah. something that you all need to think about. Hey, talk, look, look at the time we've spent already. Time and money. Switch. This thing is so exciting because I think we're really going to take the voices of these kids and it's going to give them a chance to have their voices heard um, in a way that perhaps the teachers never have a chance to hear. Yeah. You know, I just... I just wonder about the time that we're putting into these kinds of things. How much time is it sucking away from instruction, what we need to be doing in the schools, the issues that we need to deal with? I'm just concerned about that as an issue. Yeah, but I think if, if the teachers are able to understand the narratives of their students, um, they will be able to, to develop a curriculum that really impacts their lives and helps them transition to a new life uh, here in this area. You know, it sounds, it sounds good, but it sounds like a made for TV movie. I'd like to know more specifically what kind of benefit we are going to be getting from this in the schools. A made for TV movie? This is research. It's based on a history of case study and ethnography, and we're taking this a step farther to make this a participatory study, where students' voices actually shape the way this research can, be, can play out. And the voices that they're going to hear, that, that the opportunities that this will provide for teachers are, are innumerable. I see this as a wonderful opportunity for your teachers to grow and learn from this. How will you protect the students and the families and caregivers and parents that stand behind them? How are you going to protect their stories? What? I, I think that, that uh, you know, we consider their concerns. Um, they obviously, they're, they're, there will be a level of anonymity about this and confidentiality. Um, in addition to that, uh, they will sign on uh, willingly. We'll explain the research to them at the beginning. And one of your concerns in your letter to us earlier was how do we address the illegal legal immigration issue? And we're not approaching it from, from, from that lens. We're not going to ask about their, um, their legal status. Uh, 
we're not interested in, in those questions. We're interested in um, the stories that students have as they adjust to life in an American school. Stories are well and good. Dr. Seuss tells stories. What benefit is there for my students and for our teachers? That's what we need from this kind of research. You're talking about, I think in the proposal, maybe what, talking to maybe five students? That's well and good, but how do you generalize to a whole population from five students? The power of story goes beyond generalization. Um, this is not, we're not intending to generalize. This is not a double blind drug study. Um, this is an opportunity to hear people's voices, to understand people's lived experiences inside and outside of classrooms. Because you're working with children, aren't you going to have to involve their parents or caregivers to some degree? They, the children can't give consent. They're going to have their parents or their caregiver, their legal guardian or whoever, has got to be able to say yes, they can participate. Yeah, we'll, How are you going to work with them? We will work with them. We'll get the forms translated into their, into their uh, home languages. Uh, and we will work with the parents um, to get consent. And we'll also get assent from, from the students themselves. And you want to do this in the schools, not outside of school? Well, inside school and outside of school. And, and freeze. And relax. We're going to talk for a couple of minutes, but uh, at the same time, if I had them freeze for four minutes, uh, they, they would collapse and, and fall over, so I'll, I'll let them relax. As the, they were playing that, did you have any questions that you would like to, or comments that you would like to give either of these, these groups? Okay. Yes? Uh, it's interesting that um, what has been brought out in between these two kind of different groups is that they actually do have a higher common purpose, higher common goal of helping teachers to um, support their students and helping those students succeed. Yeah. But it is not something, at least in this play, that they've addressed or you know, come together around to say, you know, we do have a, a common goal here. Now let's see if we can kind of merge our two ideas together here to make that happen yeah uh, that that's come up uh, up with uh, our, some of our analysis as well yeah uh, but the the struggles are is how do we help these bodies begin to do this and not just in this particular play but uh, I know colleagues throughout North America are struggling with those same sort of things so how do we begin to get beyond uh, I think uh, DJ you said one of the rehearsals uh, the the micro to get to the macro or from the particular to get to the universal so we're going to uh, take a look at a few more scenes that begin to problematize it first and then we're going to take a look at how to how to move beyond that problem to find some common ground that we can work with. And uh, 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 easier said than done, you know, but uh, it, it's something that we're, we're trying to aim towards through the conversation. So I'm going to let the cars dissolve, and we're going to look at uh, yes. Oh, did you have yes? Yeah. Just a process question. Yeah. Um, are the characters? Um, is Aaron intentionally being kind of aversive? Is that part of a script? Exactly. Okay. So yes. just uh, like, this is a prescripted kind of thing. It uh, yes, and, yes, it's sort of. Uh, it's improvisational in that we all know the material, the research data that we've worked with, the, the stories, etc. But every time we perform it, it's different. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we're going to be going performing it in uh, uh, Philadelphia. No, Philadelphia. Philadelphia in April. And I'm sure it's going to be similar but different. We have certain uh, aspects that we want to the, the think about, but we respond each time differently. So it's very much improvisationally based. There's no script, but there is data upon which uh, the improvisation is based. Okay, does that answer your question? Yeah. Can okay. I tease out your question a yes. little bit more? The, uh, the, the specific is, is are, are these guys are you specifically supposed to be adversarial to this group. I mean, we seem like we're we're we're, we're colliding. That's right. And so we're not solving a problem here yes. at this point. And that is by intention. Exactly. Okay. Good. Uh, as it, uh, in other words, we're trying to create a, what we problem. would say problem-based learning, yeah. and you and uh, us begin to. Uh, 
begin to explore all of the, uh, some of the dimensions of it. As I said, the girl who said, thanks for not preaching at us, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, looking at it, because there, it is complex, and each variable is going to change that. We're going to look at some variables on a, a different form of entry. Uh, uh, right now and uh, we're going to play one scene over probably about eight to ten times and each time we're going to look at what are the subtleties in that scene and how do we move from uh, a matter-of-fact business-like approach to a more humane approach of, of how we work with one another. Yes? The other thing that, you know, as, as each group was uh, talking and, and envisioning the meeting, they're, they're both developing the script that's going to happen in the meeting and they're completely different <laughs> scripts of what's going to happen in the future. So they, they've kind of pre, they have a preconceived notion of what's going to happen in that meeting, and they're fairly opposite. Exactly. Now, uh, this is based upon uh, uh, a comment that a uh, drama educator uh, said many years ago, is what we don't realize that we're all playwrights. Every day of our lives, we pre-live events, and we relive events. And we probably write 40, 50, 60 scripts a day, these sorts of scripts. And how do these scripts get in our way? You know, how, the, how do they facilitate as we prepare? Or how do they set up uh, boundaries for us? So, so that's part of what we're trying to look at, is where is that pre-script? Now what's interesting, uh, the adversarial seems to, and we're going to look at a scene later, maybe a response to... Uh, either an imagined or a real resistance on this other side, and we're going to explore that too. So this is the opening scene. We, we d debated actually quite a bit whether we wanted to show you the video they made first. And we wanted, didn't, didn't want to predispose you to the complete video to go through a bit of a process, and we'll look at that entire video that they created at the end. <laughs> 